according to his book, the um, him and Shawn Michaels were supposed to have a moment together after the match. Like he was supposed to get up and like, you know, they were supposed to hug and do like a hive and like you know do like a celebratory thing so that Brett could pass the torch to Shawn. Mm-hmm. And apparently. Shawn Michaels went the other way and like told and he was like being an asshole the whole time because well <laughs> Shawn, this well, doesn't surprise me because Shawn yeah. Michaels in the nine <laughs> Shawn Michaels in the nineties he was not the best guy to get along with um, he had a he had a big like he had a big drug and alcohol problem and everything and he was mm-hmm. just it's amazing that that guy was able to even work. Like, there's been a recent interview where Shawn Michaels was asked about, where, like, Shawn Michaels was either asked or he started, or he talked about the behavior, about what he would have done, like, now that he works with NXT as a trainer. He, like, you know, someone asked him, you know, if what would you tell your younger self? And he's like, honestly, I probably would have fired me. Yeah. He's like, I would have, he's like, I would have, I would have definitely given myself penalties and I probably in like with my behavior I would have sent my I would have sent me to rehab and if that oh, didn't yeah. work I would have fired me but somehow that didn't happen and here I am well I, I, I think it was a different time in wrestling definitely because everybody was doing something you know they were all doing pills for one uh, or they were know, drinking some of them, or they were well drinking was drinking like well it was drinking and pills usually yeah, yeah. like like, and, like I remember in Bret Hart's in like another thing in Bret Hart's book where like, like he talks about how like everybody on the road had their vices and like you kind of like you kind of had to choose which vice you were going to have because if you didn't do one of them, you felt like he felt like he would have wound up doing one of the other ones and then one of the other ones would have killed him. So it was either like yeah. it was either like it, it was either like it was either. Like women, or you know, just like just like sex and cheating on your wife and whatever, and just you know, infidelity, or drugs or alcohol, and or some combination of the three. Yeah, or a combination of the three. And he figured, well, I'm I'm gonna have to pick. Like he fig- he felt like he had no choice in the matter, yeah. and he just had to pick one of them. Mm-hmm. So he was like, all right, well, then I guess I'll just. I guess I'll just sleep with a bunch of women. It's going to be the most likely one to keep me out of trouble in yeah. the other areas. And like, that's not going to hurt my, that's not going to kill my body. Like I'm not going to get hurt. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can get hurt, but it's not, no. but yeah. not, but like, you're not, you're not going to have like a heart attack and die because like, you're not going to OD on women <laughs> essentially. Right. Yeah. I, I, it's sad because I think, you know, a big reason why it's be taken so much more seriously now is because of the death of Eddie Guerrero. Yeah, um, and Chris really, Benoit. That's why we have Benoit. concussion research in well, sports. The, yeah, the con- Benoit, especially for the concussion thing, because of the CTE, you know, link to his crimes. Um, but you know, like in, in regards to the drug use, it was definitely uh, Eddie Guerrero's death because he was known to have. Uh, uh, he was known as a history of abusing st- both steroids and cocaine and which a lot of guys did and you know it it affected his heart which again happens to a lot of guys you know yeah. how many wrestlers have we lost of, of from heart disease in in the last 10 or 20 years a lot too many you know? the, if too many, right? the average wrestler lives to like 60 like 60 is considered like an old man if you're a pro yeah. if you were a pro wrestler in life yeah because they just don't see that age very often no and um it, you know it's sad that it took you know the death of of Eddie Guerrero in the prime of his career to like kind of drive it into a better place you know with the wellness policy now the wellness policy i think is is kind of strict and stupid in other regards like you know how they're like guys that smoke weed you know get get wellness policy violations when it's like really come on like weed's not gonna do it like yeah and it's it just got legalized in new york for god's sakes yeah Yeah. and i you know i get they kind of have to be like across the board serious but then at the same time it's okay for guys to do painkillers and drink so 
like you know they ha- like if you're gonna do something let them smoke weed because yeah it it it's not addictive it's gonna help them with the pain that they ha- inevitably have because it's a hard career and that they're not killing their bodies with it you know right plus most of their vices now are playing video games yeah <laughs> so like so that's changed a whole lot yeah. I, I think it was the, like the Undertaker had said something about that when he was on Joe Rogan. Like he's like, you, you know, you walk into the locker room now, and the, like half the guys are like sitting there playing Nintendo Switch, and he's like, "Wow, it's like way different than when I was coming up." You know, like you walk yeah. into the locker room back then, guys were like, you know, like look at his score, friggin' drugs or or doing steroids. Yeah, like they that, had yeah. switchblades or guns in their pocket <laughs> just in case the promoter was gonna rip them off. It was yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely a different world nowadays. Yeah, and, you know, it's. I think it's it's better. You know, you, you look at times where. Yeah, they're taking. Issues. I mean, they're taking care of themselves, and they're a lot smarter with their yeah. money. Yeah. Where like back then, the mentality like they didn't even they didn't have, like, they didn't have like financial advisors. They didn't have like a, an accountant or a tax guy or whatever. They didn't have any of that stuff, and if they did, they kept it to themselves because it was just. It was such a cutthroat business. I mean, it still is, but like it was even more so back then, where like you were hoping that the uh, you were just you were hoping that you stayed on top for as long as you could, and you did whatever you could to bury the other guy, which that still happens. But yeah. it's but like now, but like now they're smarter with their money, and like the mentality back then was, well, I better spend all of my money because there you had this big jones mentality where like people needed to keep up with the joneses and if you had money you had to show everybody that you had money for some stupid reason where like now you see all these like tech billionaires and they're just wearing like you know a $30 jeans a $15 t-shirt and that's mm-hmm. like that's their whole wardrobe every day and where yeah. like you'd never know if you saw them on the street right yeah it's it's a different mentality than it was Back, especially in the '80s, you know, '80s was all about like showing off your wealth. Yeah, you know, um, and I, I, I kind of think it's better also in regards to like, like the workers themselves. And like, you know, when you had guys in the in the '80s and '90s coming out to the ring, either stoned or drunk or something, you know, it, the work hurt. And now it's like people don't tolerate it anymore. It's like when when um, a few years ago. In TNA, when it was uh, it was Sting versus Jeff Hardy. Oh, and, and Jeff Hardy Jeff was wasted. Out. Yeah, yeah, completely wasted. And like people were mad about it. You know, it's yeah. Like, if you're gonna like, you know, people came. They paid mo- good money to see a match. Like they don't want to see you come out stoned and like unable to perform. You yeah. Know? Well, first of all, Impact was very irresponsible for even sending him out. Well. And yeah. then all, and then Sting looked at him and was like, "There's no way he can do this," so he just rolled him up really quickly. And yeah. like that was the match because he was like, well, "Well, I'm not. We're not going through this match. Something bad is going to happen if we do 20 minutes or 30 minutes." I think, and well, I think Sting also had the. He was mad the too. Ref. He well, he was pissed, and he had the ref do the X. Yeah. To, to like the ramp, so that way they knew something was wrong. And then of course mm-hmm. Bischoff came out, saw what kind of condition Jeff Hardy was in. It was like, all right. You know, just pin him, just pin him, and you know, get it. And Jeff like didn't even know what was happening. He thought the match was still going on and tried to actually kick out of the yeah, like you know, Sting like power pinned him pretty much. You know, yeah, Uh, yeah. But but the officials should have never let him out. They should have just they they should have just done something on the fly and just said, well, he can't do it. We've like let's just write him off right now. Yeah, let's oh, just do. He got, a, he got attacked backstage, you know, something like that. You know, yeah, like, let's just do some. Well, let's just do something. And we'll deal with it later. We'll like, and let's just send out. I don't know, Christopher Daniels or somebody who can give yeah. these people a good match. Yeah, I mean, I, that just goes to show that TNA is just not good writing at all because you know they could have saved that match and instead they just chose to like end it as it was and sting was pissed off the fans were pissed off everybody was just pissed off yeah so. and how many uh, how how many people how many members of their audience did they lose that day like oh, for, for sure good like how many people yeah. how many people just never came back after that yeah Especially because it was like that was like their main pay per view. I'm pretty sure. And yeah, I think it was at like um, what was it? Bound for Glory is that their big one, or some kind of like Road to Glory or something like that? Maybe 
It was their like it was basically their WrestleMania. It was their WrestleMania analog, and it was the main event of their WrestleMania analog with two of like the you know the most famous wrestlers of all time. Mm-hmm. You know, and people were looking forward to it. Yeah, you know? just not cool. 